Hi Science Buddies! I am Teacher Jaja, your teacher for today's Science at Home class. Come and join me and let's explore the wonderful world of science because science is fun. Are you ready? Great! So bring out the inner scientist in you and together we're going to explore the wonderful world of science. Before we start our discussion, Please get your science module number one entitled, Does It Matter? Science Notebook and Ballpen Ready. This video lesson will focus on the following. Lesson one, materials that absorb water. At the end of this video lesson, you are expected to one, Describe materials based on their ability to absorb water and two, classify materials based on their ability to absorb water. You're going to describe and classify. This video lesson is designed to help you learn the properties of matter based on the ability to absorb water. Let's see what you know about our lesson. So we have here different kinds of pictures, a picture of a ball, a cotton ball, an empty plastic bottle, a face towel, and a t-shirt. So we're going to examine each picture, and you're going to list down the materials based on the properties they possess. As you can see in our table, on the first column, we have the materials that absorb water and the materials that do not absorb water. So where do you think the basketball belongs to? Does it absorb water or do not absorb water? Very good. The ball do not absorb water. What about the cotton ball? Does it absorb water or do not absorb water? Yes, you're right. Cotton balls absorbs water. What about the empty plastic bottle? Does it absorb water or do not absorb water? Correct. Plastic bottles do not absorb water. What about the face towel? Does it absorb water or do not absorb water? Definitely. Face towel absorbs water. What about the t-shirt? Does it absorb water or do not absorb water? You are correct. T-shirt absorb water. So what is your score? Did you get a perfect five, perfect score? If not, it's okay. Just listen to our topic and then you're going to learn about the materials that absorb water and the materials that do not absorb water. Okay, what's new? Let's do this activity entitled Activity 1, I'm Thirsty. So you're going to need a rubber ball, a rug, a basin or a pail, a water, t-shirt, plastic bottle, glass, face towel, and a cotton. So what are you going to do? Number one, you're going to get all the materials needed for the activity and then put water in a basin. And then number three, put the materials one by one in a basin of water, pail of, the, pail of water for one minute and observe what will happen. What do you think will happen to the materials when we put it into the pail of water? Observe each material before placing it into the pail of water. So what are your observations on the materials before placing it into the water? The rubber ball. Very good. The rubber ball is dry and light. Light in weight. They're referring to the weight of the rubber ball. So it's dry and light in weight. What about the cotton balls? Same. Okay, very good. So dry and light. T-shirt, dry and light. Face towel, it is dry and light as well. The rug, it is dry and light. The plastic bottle, it is dry and light. And the glass, it is dry and light. 
So, we are describing the state it is in, which is dry, and the weight, which is light. And now, let us observe if these materials absorb water or do not absorb water. Watch carefully. Okay, let's complete the table. On the third column, put a check mark if the material absorbs water and X if does not. So the rubber ball, does it absorbs water or does not absorb water? What is your answer? Okay, very good. So the answer is X because the rubber ball does not absorb water. On the fourth column, what happened when you took out the material out of the bowl? Did it release water immediately or did it, did it absorb water? What do you think? What is your observation? Okay, very good. The material did not absorb water and because of that, it has the same weight. What about the cotton balls? Does it absorb water or does not absorb water? Yes, the cotton balls absorbs water. That's where we're going to put a check mark. What about your observation? Okay, it becomes wet, it becomes heavier, and when you squeeze it, it releases water. Okay, very good. What about on the t-shirt? Does it absorb water or does not absorb water? Very good. So the t-shirt absorbs water. So it becomes wet, heavier in weight, and releases water when you squeeze it. What about the face towel? Does it absorb water or does not absorb water? Okay, very good. So the face towel absorbs water. So what is your observation after the, the face towel get wet? Okay, it becomes heavier and releases water when you squeeze it. What about the rug? Does it absorb water or does not absorb water? Okay, very good. So the rug absorbs water and it becomes wet, heavier in weight, releases water when you squeeze it. What about the plastic bottle? Okay, so the plastic bottle does not absorb water. It's just the same as the state it is in before placing it into the bowl of water. It did not absorb water at all and have the same weight. What about the glass? Okay, the glass does not absorb water and has the same weight. Did you got it right? Do we have... The same observations. Okay, very good, guys. All right. Now that we are done in our activity, let's answer these questions based on your observation. Question number one. Based on the activity, what are the characteristics of the material before placing it in water? What is your answer? Great! All materials are dry before placing it in water. Question number two. What came out when you took out each material from the bowl? 
Very good. Water came out when you squeezed the material. Very good, guys. Okay, next question. Okay, let's answer question number three. Did all the materials absorb water? Which of them did not absorb water? Yes, you're right. Not all the materials absorb water. The rubber ball, the plastic ball, and the glass did not absorb the water when placing it into the bowl. Question number four. Which of the materials absorb water? Yes, your observations are correct. The materials that absorb water are the cotton balls, the t-shirt, the face towel, and the rock. So how did it absorb water? Okay, so let's answer this question. Why these materials absorb water while the others did not in our next slide. Absorb means to take something in such as water in a natural or gradual way. So water soaks in many materials. These materials absorb water and they are called porous materials. So porous materials have small holes that allow air or liquid to pass through. These materials are also called absorbent materials. As you can see in this illustration of a sponge, this sponge has a small holes into it. So a sponge and cotton is very porous, which makes it a natural absorber of water. So when you're going to squeeze the sponge or cotton, water will come out because the water goes inside through the material. Repel means to move away. Ibig sabihin, when we say repel, hindi pumapasok yung water or air inside the material. There are a lot of materials that water will not soak into. These materials repel water. Non-porous materials do not allow air or liquid to pass through. Ibig sabihin, yung material hindi pumapasok yung liquid or yung water dun sa loob, just like this rubber mat. So, rubber mat is an example of a non-porous material. It is also called a non-absorbent material. So, rubber mats and plastics or any materials that made of plastic and rubber does not allow water to pass through. Bakit? As you can see in these illustrations, these are the molecules or the particles that made up the rubber mat. As you can see, the particles or the molecules are tightly packed. There is no space for air or water to pass through it or go inside the material. Ibig sabihin na dikit na dikit yung mga particles natin, yung mga molecules natin. Kaya walang space for the water para pumasok or yung air para pumasok. That's why yung rubber and plastic is non-porous materials kasi yung molecules ng mga ito, yung mga materials na ito is tightly packed. Remember, there are different materials in our environment that can be classified based on their ability to absorb water more than the others. Porous materials or absorbent materials are materials having small holes that allow air or liquid to pass through. Examples are cotton and sponge. Non-porous materials or non-absorbent materials are materials that does not allow liquid or air to pass through it. Examples are materials made of plastic and rubber. Materials can be classified based on its ability to absorb water and repels water. Materials that absorb water are called porous materials. These porous materials are also called absorbent materials. So these absorbent materials absorbs water. So the materials that made of paper and cotton are porous materials or, or absorbent materials. Whereas, non-porous materials are materials that repels water. So, these materials are usually made of metal, glass, 
plastic, and a rubber. So if a material is made of metal, glass, plastic, and rubber, it usually repels water. For us, the material that is made of wood can be classified as a porous material as well as a non-porous material because there are some types of wood that absorbs water while there are some types of wood that repels water just like the balsa wood which is made which is used in making boats so this the balsa wood is an example of a material that repels water okay let's see what you've got let's do this activity activity one porous or non-porous what are you going to do you're going to tell whether the materials are porous or non-porous by checking the corresponding column rubber ball is it a porous or a non-porous material yes you're correct a rubber ball rubber balls are non-porous material what about cotton balls is it porous or non-porous yes cotton balls are definitely porous materials what about a sponge is it a porous or a non-porous material yes correct sponge are porous materials what about a face towel is it a porous or a non-porous material yes face towel are face towels are porous materials what about a t-shirt is it a porous or a non-porous yes t-shirt porous material what about a rug is it a porous or a non-porous material yes porous material what about tissue is it a porous or a non-porous material correct tissues are porous materials what about a manila paper is it porous or non-porous material that's nice porous are manila paper are porous materials what about a styrofoam is it a porous or a non-porous material okay styrofoams are non-porous materials what about a curtain is it a porous or a non-porous material yes you're correct curtains are porous materials very good okay let's do this activity what i have learned or what you have learned are you ready okay great so you're going to fill in the missing word to make the sentence complete are you ready now let's begin i learned that there are different materials in our environment and they can be classified according to their very good according to their properties next materials can be classified based on their ability to blank water and blank water what is your answer very good materials can be classified based on their ability to absorb water and repel water next cotton is an example of a black material cotton is an example of a porous material right next plastics are blank materials it does not allow water to pass through plastics are non-porous materials it does not allow water to pass through did you get all the missing words right wow very good guys congratulations for that okay let's check what have you learned for today assessment let's do this assessment a directions write true if the statement is correct if the statement is false change the underlined word or words with porous non-porous absorb or doesn't absorb do this in your science notebook are you ready okay let's begin number one plastics are porous materials okay what's your answer okay the answer is non-porous number two non-porous materials are materials having small holes that allow air or water to pass through is this statement correct okay so the answer is porous the statement is incorrect so the answer is porous material number three cotton is a porous material is this statement correct yes very good so the statement is true number four 
materials made of cloth do not absorb water. Is this statement correct? Okay, the answer is no. So, what's the correct answer for this one? Okay, the answer is absorb. Okay, number five. Wood is a material that absorbs water. Is this statement correct? What's your answer? Okay, so that statement is not correct. Mat wood is a material that uh, do not absorb water. But it depends on the type of wood, right? Okay, very good. Very good, guys. Okay, let's go to our next activity. What are you going to do? You're going to write A for absorbent if the materials absorb water and NA for non-absorbent if the materials do not absorb water. Are you ready? Okay, number one, what's the answer? Okay, NA for non-absorbent. Number two, plastic bag. Okay, NA for non-absorbent. Number three, blanket. Yes, A for absorbent. Number four, paper. Yes, A for absorbent. Number five, plastic bottle. Yes, NA for non-absorbent. Number six, cloth. Okay, A for absorbent. Number seven, manila paper. Okay, A for, not, for absorbent. Number eight, handkerchief. Okay, the answer is A for absorbent. Number nine, rug. Okay, A for absorbent. And number 10, sponge. Okay, the answer is A for absorbent. Did you got it right? Okay, very good, guys. Congratulations. I am happy that you have accomplished the task given to you. There are different materials in our environment that can be classified based on their ability to absorb water more than the others. Materials made of cotton are porous, they absorb water easily. And materials made of metal, rubber, glass, and plastic are non-porous or non-absorbent materials. They don't have holes or pores, that's why these materials are non-absorbent materials. That's it for now, guys. Once again, I am Teacher Jaja, your awesome science teacher. Join me again next time in exploring the wonderful world of science because science is fun. Bye!